End of our tour. You've made it. Bravo. So, we are at the Hill of Arts. This is a great place to finish your tour. Look at this view. And we are in the District Museum of Brussels. So, if it's not beautiful weather today, but I think that maybe it will not be the case. Maybe it will be beautiful weather. But if it's not, you can go to the museum. And you have the Magritte Museum on the corner right there, on the right. He's a famous painter. Famous, famous, famous surrealist painter. He's Belgian. And you see this building with those iron ornaments. This is the Museum of Music Instruments. This is the best museum in town, in my opinion, with the comic book museum, because it has the largest collection of music instruments in the world. And it has a special section on that Belgian invention, the saxophone. Yep, yep, the saxophone is Belgian. John Coltrane using our stuff. So if you want to go, if you're, if you're in this building, and if you go on the top floor of this building, you will have a gorgeous panoramic view of the city. From there, you can see the Atomium. My advice is this one. Don't go to the Atomium. It's far away. 45 minutes with the subway. It's too long, you will waste your day. And the Atomium is nice, beautiful, but the area around it is ugly. Okay? So, you can see it from there, it's enough. By the way, it's a restaurant, so you have to pay to see the view, basically. But do what I do. Look at the card, look at the view. Look at the card, look at the view. And be like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not that hungry anymore. Thank you very much. Take a picture. Thank you very much. Have a nice one. It actually works, OK? Otherwise, if you're hungry, it's a good restaurant. Anyway. So guys, to finish my tour, why it's hot here? Jesus Christ, look at this. 35 degrees? 40, 50? I don't know. So. Uh, oh no. <laughs> so that's that's Belgian, huh? Uh, don't be happy too soon. So guys, I want to finish my tour talking about something happened that happened here, World War One, because Belgium has played a massive role in World War One, but no one knows that. You know, like I told you, but you know what I told you. We don't have the recognition for anything. No one knows about us. That will change now with this beach. Okay. Do um, you see the statue at the far end of the park? This is King Albert. He was our king in 1909. And things back in Europe at that time started to become really critical. And in fact, on 28 June 1914, Franz Ferdinand, the heir of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, was assassinated by a Serbian nationalist in Sarajevo. Things then moved very quickly. Austria Hungary declared war on Serbia because it was Serbian nationalists who killed their hair. Within a month, the Germans gave the Austrians their backing. And Russia backed up Serbia. And France backed up Russia. It was the start of the Great War. The Germans had a plan. Instead of attacking the French, coming from the east, they wanted to surprise them and come from the north. Why? Because the whole French army was defending the German border. No one thought to defend the Belgian border. So the Germans wanted to surprise the French and go through Belgium because there would be no resistance, no army waiting for them and they will reach Paris in no time. And when they will have Paris, they will have France. And when they have France, they win the war. But it was a tiny problem on their way that they didn't expect. And that problem, it was Belgium. <laughs> we became a country in the 19th century. But there was a deal. You can become a country, but you will be neutral. But on the 2nd of August, 1914, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany, he imposed an ultimatum to Brussels, demanding Belgium to let his forces pass or else be destroyed and Belgium had a whole day to respond that ultimatum which we rejected because we have big balls <laughs> so the powerful German army crossed the Belgian border 
One hour after the German invasion had begun, King Albert, on his horse in combat uniform, rode to meet his parliament. He went inside the parliament. He waited for the guests to sit down. He entered the parliament. He threw his gloves. And that guy said, One single vision fills all our minds that our independence is endangered. One single duty imposes itself upon our wills. The duty of stubborn resistance. This is the moment for action. No one in this country will fail in his duty because I have faith in our destinies. A country that defends itself who cares the respect of all and such a country shall not die. So, the small Belgian army led by King Albert, the chief of commander of the army, they resisted 10 days against the powerful German army. You might think that 10 days is not a big deal, but Belgium is little. You can go through Belgium in two days. And we were so small and German people, there were like so many. And we resisted 10 days. And what is beautiful is that the Belgian people, they sacrificed their lives not to win the battle. They knew they were not going to win the battle. They sacrificed their lives just to give time to the French to come and defend the Belgian border. Just to give time. And that, I think, is beautiful. So when the Germans arrived in France, it was already too late. They've lost 10 days against all the odds, okay? They were slowed down. When they reached France, the French army was waiting for them. And that's why the four years of the war, the Great War, I don't know if you know that, happened in the north of France. They never got lower. The whole World War I happened in the north of France with the trenches. It was the north of France, never suffered. So they never reached Paris and they never won the war. So I guess today we can say, you're welcome. <laughs>